G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. Today's video, we are going to be having a crack at predicting the 2024 All-Australian team. This is a tough task. I've had to mix it up quite a little bit. You know, I'm looking at last year's team. We had 11 players from memory that had never been All-Australian before they made the team last year. And we're talking about the actual 22, not the squad. So in today's video, I've had a crack at trying to see into the future and pick 22 players that I think will be All-Australian this year. Now, it's been tricky because you have to be bold with it. It's it's just like any ladder predictor. You can't simply just rank the players or the teams based on who you think is the best player right now. I've had to throw in a few bold ones and I've gone as far as having eight first time all Australians in this particular 22. And to be honest, that's probably still conservative. I know this video is going to be divisive. Videos of this nature are always divisive. So as we go along, let me know in the comments who you think should have made it as I go through each position. Before I get into it, if you could do me a favor and subscribe to the channel if you are enjoying it. We are very close to the preseason games kicking off and then the opening round is not too far after that. So for plenty of AFL content, this is a great channel to subscribe to. So let's crack straight into this team. Like I said, eight first time All Australians. As I look at it, I think I actually made a late change and made it nine. So let's start with the back line. And this is probably where I've been the most creative. So let's start with the key position players. I've gone with Harris Andrews and Sam Taylor. I think these are probably my two top two key backs in the league. And I think Sam Taylor probably would have made it last year, if not from memory. He had a slow start to the season where I think he missed some games. And I think Harris Andrews is probably the premier key back of the competition. Instead of picking a third key back, there was a few options there. I've decided to go with James Sicily and Tom Stewart. So Tom Stewart for a start has made five of the last six All-Australian teams. And I just don't see this guy regressing unless he picks up an injury, which is a huge variable in this, right? Because if you have an injury and you miss four games of a season, that's gonna severely diminish your chances of making All-Australian. So it's hard to predict that. But considering that the other players in there are Sicily and Stewart, I couldn't justify having another key back, which is why Darcy Moore and Jake Wittering were the unlucky ones to miss out because I just ranked Harris Andrews and Sam Taylor a little bit higher and Cicely and Stewart I just feel very confident in. So the halfback flankers are where I've had some fun. And again, I made a late change here and I omitted Jack Sinclair and I do apologize for that. To be honest, part of it is just mixing it up a little bit and Jack Sinclair has one back-to-back -back halfback flank all Australian spots and therefore I thought he's probably the one to make way. Yes, you could make the same argument for Tom Stewart. I'm just a little bit more confident in Tom Stewart. I think that's fair. So the halfback flank is I've gone with Isaac Quaino and Connor Iden, two players that I think really could elevate their game to the next level this year. And like I said, if I'm looking at halfback flankers who would be first time all Australians, those two and a third one on the bench we'll get to are the leading candidates in my eyes to make this position their own. I'm most confident about Connor Arden. I think this guy's a bit of a budding star that could really take his game to the next level this year. And therefore he cracks my all Australian team. Let's move through the midfield. And conversely, this is the part of the ground where I've shaken it up the least. And this is why I think I'm almost certainly going to be wrong, but I just couldn't justifiably drop some of these players. So let's talk specifics. Bonson Pelly, I think is the best player in the game. And I'm gonna assume he's fully fit. And therefore I can't justifiably not have him in my all Australian team. I've also decided to go for pretty much conventional wingmen in Goulden and Dacos. And I think those are clearly the best two players for that position in this competition. And therefore, I couldn't pick anyone else for that role. I think they're both safe bets. They're both on an upward trajectory, but really, who knows? For the ruck spot, I think I'm gonna give that back to Max Gorn. I know Tim English was uh, all Australian this year and probably Roland Marshall pretty close to that mix as well. But I think if Max Gorn stays fit, I think justifiably he is the number one ruck in the competition. So I couldn't put anyone else in there. And as for the on-ballers, like I've got Nick Dacos. Like again, how can you bet against Nick Dacos being all Australian this year? So he was an absolute Monty. And so for the other spot, this is where I've shaken it up a little bit. And I've got a second time all Australian in Sam Walsh making his way back into this team. He's just my pick to have an enormous year. I think a serious Brownlow contender when you extrapolate his end to 2023. And therefore, I've got him pipping a couple of other midfielders here. So let's talk about the forwards now. Again, I've shaken it up a tiny little bit, but not a lot. And this is again where I'm going to be vulnerable. But let's start with the key position players. I'm gonna back in the King twins. I think the Saints are gonna have a good year. I think Ben King is gonna have a good year for the Gold Coast Suns. 
uh, and therefore they're just my pick to be first time all Australians in the same team Charlie Kerno again back to back Coleman not willing to bet against him being in this mix too save for injury Toby Green I think is in the top handful of plays in the competition I think Charlie Cameron is clearly the best small forward in the competition but you know the contrasting him a little bit to Toby Green I, I'm saying Charlie's a bit more of an actual small with his defensive pressure and the fact that he kicks 55 goals every year yeah, I'm not going to bet against that and then Petrarca again I've slapped him on a forward flank and maybe that's contentious but that's where he's been picked previously and again one of the best players in the competition so the variability of the All-Australian team can depend so much on players staying fit so I've tried to do a balance of just picking guys that I think I can't not pick them but also throwing in a few first timers and that's the King Twins who I think as they, as they turn 24 if I'm not mistaken this year they could really explode out of the blocks but there's a few good players I've had to leave out of there now let's talk about the interchange bench, and this is tough. So I have decided against a second Ruckman, and I've gone with two midfielders, a running defender, and a medium-sized forward. So specifically, I'm talking about the two Port Adelaide boys in Zach Butters and Connor Rosie. Why are they on the bench and not starting in the team? I have no strong opinions about that. They could absolutely both be on the field. Maybe Bont doesn't have such a good year, and maybe he's on the bench. Could Rosie justifiably be ahead of Walsh? Sure, he's probably a better player at this current point in time. But I just thought I'd mix it up a little bit. Either way, they're in the team. Bailey Fritch is another one who I think has not been All-Australian before. But another player that I think is worthy of winning one at some point in his career. He's probably right in that age bracket where he's in his prime. Kicking 50 or 60 goals as a medium-sized forward is not that hard for Bailey Fritch. Like, he is an absolute gun. And last year, he missed a fair bit of footy and still kicked a fair few goals per game from memory. So that's another one I've just thrown into the mix here. There's a few other good options. And then the other running defender I've gone with is Nick Blakey. I agonized. I had Jack Sinclair in this team right before I started recording this video and I change it just to have another first timer in there. I don't feel strongly about Jack Sinclair not being there. He is for all intents and purposes probably more likely than say Nick Blakey but I do really like Nick Blakey. I think he had a really good year. I can't remember where he finished in their, in their best and fairest but I think it might have been second. Double check that if I'm wrong. I'm editing it out of the video uh, but I do think this guy is probably approaching his prime, has some serious weapons and if the Swans have a good year I thought I'd put him into this team to really shake up the mix a little bit. So let's talk about some honorable mentions that I missed out of this video. I talked about Wittering and Moore. They're probably the next two key backs into this side for me. Dan Houston was another one that just missed out. And of course, I already talked about Jack Sinclair. No real strong opinions. We're trying to just have a crack at predicting the unpredictable here. Uh, now, the, the midfield is really tough because Jordan Dawson was in this team when I started it. And then I took him out. And I know that, again, I'm not really popular with Adelaide fans right at this point in time. But he was just the one that edged out. I, I couldn't justifiably pick him over Dacos or Bonten Pelly. Could he oust one of the Port Adelaide boys in Butters and Rosie? Absolutely, he could. He was just a little bit unlucky with it. Same with the Caleb Sarong. He didn't make this team. Zach Merritt didn't make this team. Tom Green is another one tipped to explode. He didn't win it last year. I think he missed a couple of games, but still had the most possessions of any player, or at least per game. So I've got him just missing out, but there's so many other good players, like Lockie Neal's not in this team. LDU is a player that I wanted to cram in here and, and could be there. I'd probably just bet against him because of his injury issues. Jack Steele, same thing. Or with Jack Steele, it's more about you know lack of pre-seasons, if I'm not mistaken. Took Miller could also justifiably be in this team. So we're splitting hairs between some absolutely elite players, but this is just the mix I've gone with. As for forwards, you know, there's there's a few good key forwards. Like I, I omitted Nick Larkey, but he absolutely could be in this team again. Uh, I, I guess the, the logic with him is that if we tip north to finish bottom two again, what are the odds that Nick Larkey kicks another 70 goals? Like it could happen, but I think it's less likely to happen if north haven't improved, which they could improve, but I didn't bet on it. Same thing with Oscar Allen, like great season last year, but I don't think he's going to get the ball inside 50 enough to really threaten for the Coleman and I think you have to threaten for the Coleman to justifiably be in, be in the mix for All-Australian. Jamara, Aaron Norton, a couple of guys from the Bulldogs. Norton probably just isn't on quite the same talent level I think as the King Twins. Jamara has the talent. I think it's just a little bit early for him and a couple of other forwards like Shea Bolton and Tom Papley came into mind and were certainly in the mix for this but it is tough going and I know this video is only going to serve to piss people off but no disrespect was intended to some of the players that missed out. I think the two unlucky ones that I don't love that missed were Jordan Dawson and Jack Sinclair. Caleb Sarong is another one who could justifiably be in this team, but that is my crack, guys. So let me know in the comments what you would do differently. What have I got wrong? What have I got right? I hope you enjoyed the video and I appreciate you watching. So for now, I'll say goodbye and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.